Yes. Yes. It's New Year's Eve 2014. In three and a half hours, it will be 2015. And in, in two years and two months, no, two years and one month, I will be the age Jesus was when he started his ministry. And I'm not saying I'm Jesus. But you are. <laughs> no, I did not say that. You said that. No. <laughs> Neither of us said that. Nobody said. Nobody said Jesus. No, but the problem, I... People derisively say on the internet, like, why do all schizophrenics think they're Jesus? And I really have never really, like, honestly thought of Jesus. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and like, first of all, like, I have read very little of the New Testament, and if I, if I were to think I was Jesus, I think I would need to know who Jesus was <laughs> to think I was Jesus, and I don't know who Jesus was. I know at the beginning of Matthew, he says a lot of very harsh words, and I don't think I am that person. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, I, I remember a time when I was at KMH, which for you non-Torontonians is our mental hospital, and I was suffering some kind of headache, is the best way to describe it. It's basically like a headache that is um, so uh, powerful that you lose touch with what is real, or like... Is that a migraine? Is that what a migraine is? I don't know, I've never had a migraine. <laughs> but, yeah, it's like, um, well, you just think it separately you think there's a delusion, but it... It, it kind of bleeds in with the headache. It's like you feel so much pain in your brain that your brain is like trying to understand why it feels this pain. And um, there's no logical reason why it's feeling the pain. So it starts grasping at stra straws. Okay. Um, so I was just lying in bed feeling this pain in my head and um, I closed my eyes and I began, I, I don't know, like, it's hard, it's hard to describe, like, uh, I, I, I began to think of, like, explanations that were outside of what would be considered, like, if, if all of a sudden a bird appeared in my room and I, all my windows were closed, my doors were closed, there's no logical reason why there's a bird flying around in my room, but nonetheless there is a bird flying around in my room, your brain goes like, okay, how did this happen? And when there is no logical reason, for why it's happening, you say to yourself, well, then obviously it must be magic or something. Yes. Like, can you understand that? Like, does... Yes. Okay. Um, so anyways, feeling this pain, and I was like, why am I feeling this unrelenting pain in my head? Um, and the, I know I've been eating right, my, my body isn't sick, as far as I know. Uh, this isn't a headache, like, it's different from a headache, and, like, I, I, I phrase it in terms of it being a headache, anyways. 
So um, I close my eyes and just think, I'll just close my eyes and lie in this bed and let this pass. And the pain continues. And then when you think about like human suffering, like I said, I haven't read the Bible, but like you think about Jesus having suffered, that's like the most obvious, at least in the context of what I know, that's the most obvious thing to go to. And then you think, well, you know, I, I had my eyes closed and they have these food, they have like these boxes, these large boxes that carry plate after plate of food. And it was like rolling down the, uh, the hallway outside of my uh, hospital room. And I started to imagine that I was, I don't, like, basically that I was experiencing what Jesus felt before the crucifixion. And I don't know what Jesus, I, first of all, I don't know how the crucifixion went down. I don't know what he felt. But I, I had in my head that I was like tied up in this room, which I, I had been tied up in that room. And I had it in my head that I, I'm tied and tortured and locked in this room. And I'm hearing this cart roll past me um, and I'm like, part of me is like, that's the food cart, you know, that's the food cart. And I'm feeling all this pain and I think that's, I'm somehow, I'm getting messages from the past of, uh, you know, messages, messages in the terms of like, I'm feeling, I am feeling the sensation that Jesus went through when he was, I don't know if in the Bible he was bound or before the, before the crucifixion, but yeah, so that's the closest I've come to feeling like Jesus in that I felt I felt people were preparing to kill me, and I felt, um, I just had, I was very imaginative, and I was very much in pain, and so, um, when you think about like a crazy person saying, I'm Jesus, I can heal the whatever, I can turn fish and he's like ranting on the street about that. Um, you should know, um, for like, I, if you want to call me schizophrenic or bipolar or just delusional, you know, whatever you want to call me, like I've had that experience of feeling I'm Jesus, but when I say I feel I'm Jesus, I'm saying I felt extreme pain. Um, and I didn't, I, I didn't understand why I was feeling it. Um, yeah, but this is a guitar practice video. <laughs> uh, yes. And, and did, did that all make sense? Yes. Okay, okay. I, it, it was just something crazy to talk about. No, but I understood what you were saying. Yeah.
that okay? Yes.
Clano, but I forgot about the lithium. I think I had it in my head. I was so wrapped up with the idea that tonight would be difficult for me. And, you know, I think you saw me experience some stress at some points, but for the past hour or two, I, I feel so much better. Yay! If it's something that you, if it's something you're doing, thank you very much. But uh, if it's something I'm doing, I don't know what it is. But yay! <laughs>
Yeah, so I'm not going to take my meds now because I don't want to go to sleep. Yeah, um, I'm having a similar dilemma, although I think um, after I'm done practice I should take my meds just because um, I, it's very important with the lithium to take it on a full stomach. Which reminds me you should eat also at some point. Yeah, I will at some point. Yes. Do you sometimes have fears that you know you can't express and they seem like you can't express them because you know they might not be true, but they just seem so possible? Yes. And then time passes and you think back to what you were thinking. And you were like, why was I worried about that? Yep. So, does that, does that mean you're crazy or does that mean I'm sane? <laughs> that means it's a, that's it. I think it's a normal thing. <laughs> or I'm crazy, I don't know. <laughs> You're kind of like my drummer. How am I your drummer? With like the clicking? Nice, yes. Okay. If you were to meet Hugh Laurie, what would you say to him or ask him? Why are you so sexy? No, seriously. Like, th th think of it. Think of Imagine the possibility that it's not just this far off, like, it'll never happen thing. But, I like, don't really know. That's, that's what I. That's kind of the point I was trying to make. Like, when I met Doug Stanhope, I, I, I basically had nothing to say to him, 
<laughs> like I, I did my little jump for him, right? Yeah. Um, but like, I had, I don't, I, I really like your stand-up comedy. Like that, that's basically all that I would. That's all I wanted to communicate to him. Yeah. And like so. I mean, I went, I went to the theater not expecting to talk to him, and uh, then I got a direct opportunity. Like he, he even like stopped so I could speak to him. And I realized, like, I I spent like hour hour hours after hours of like watching him perform stand up on my computer, and then I met him, and I was like, you know, so like, that's my question. What 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 do you like? What would you say to him? Yeah, I don't know. I think for like a celebrity like um, Hugh Laurie, in order to be most satisfied with uh, your conversation with him, you'd have to have like a very specific question about acting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, then again, he seems like a pretty interesting person, so... Yeah, but, but you'd have to be the one 
who would make him want to actually talk to you. Yeah. As opposed to like... To just be like, sign autograph and leave. Yeah. <laughs> Give me another name. Another name? Yes. Uh, for a food? Sushi restaurant. Oh, um, Blue Lighter. Okay. <laughs> Did you look at my lighter? Is that how you thought of the name? No, actually, I was looking at the, uh, the cables on the speaker. And um, I saw the yellow cable, and I said, okay, I'm going to go against the grain and not to yellow. And then I said, okay, I'm going to go against the grain and not to cable. <laughs> okay. So the yellow cable turned into a blue lighter.
I guess I could just start calling this a podcast. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't know what you have to do to call something a podcast, but... Well, podcast is basically just radio. And... I don't know. I'm releasing all these long videos. And... I don't know. So, so you, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm sure you could call it a podcast without change anything. No, I don't know. It's just like, as opposed to thinking of what I'm doing by filming all my practices as like something a crazy person would do. Yeah. I, if I start saying, this is my podcast, <laughs> yes. I'm, no, I'm no longer just a crazy person playing guitar all the time. You're a podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> Did I ever lend you the Philip K. Dick biography? No, well, I've read Ballas. But, no, but the, it's, it's not an autobiography, it's a biography on his actual life. Then no, I don't think so. Because when I read it, I liked it. And I had uh, only read like three or four of his books. He, he had an interesting life. I don't know if I did this section or not before. Caged is so confusing because I got to these parts where like, um, I forget what I already did. Yeah. It's okay though. So you do it again. Yeah. Or sometimes I might miss a part. But I mean, like, if I'm at the level where I don't remember if I just did something or not, am I actually learning anything? I think so. Practice. Muscle memory. Yeah, like subconscious, right? Procedural memory. If 
I were someone watching this and I saw me go through all this and then I saw me like go through it a second time after stating I don't remember if I did it. No, but it, I, I think it's good that you don't remember if you did it. That's a positive thing so that means you're starting to do it unconsciously. Yeah. But there are certain things I need to know. Yeah, well, yeah, I need to know it and I don't need to know it, like, remember we were saying before how I was starting to think the, the, the term, like, the, the names of the notes, like this is an A shape, for example. Yeah. Um, that's not as, like, saying this is an A shape is... My the, ring finger does not do that, by the way. Like you're lucky your does that. Oh, thank you. Um, but saying this is an A shape, uh, like I think it's more important what it sounds like than what it's called. Yeah. But it's, uh, like it's it's good to know, but. But it's needed in cases of like when you're with someone else and you're trying to make a song together. Yeah. Um, so, the big thing about what I'm doing here is I need to memorize what's called the root notes. And if I'm doing this subconsciously, like I need to consciously know what the root notes are. Yeah, but I think you kind of do. for a couple minutes, but like wake me up if I'm not up in like an hour, okay? Okay, yeah, I'll do that unless I also fall asleep. Well, if, you, if you're going to sleep, wake me up first. <laughs> okay. I love you. I love you.